Cool, so yeah, my name is Joe Nelson. I work at Bendy Works. We make websites and iOS apps. And I wanted to share with you a way I was trying to improve my knowledge. So I've been programming for a long time, but I really wanted to get that much better, that much quicker. And the title I thought was a little misleading when I was writing it because it's not just about programming. It's not something where you have to strap in with some Red Bull and some carpal tunnel and get it done. I'm not trying to turn you into this guy. This is more of like a systematic method to I think dramatically improve your knowledge of something you're interested in and even, or just achieve some goals. So the steps here are picking a goal, breaking it down into the steps you need to achieve it that are gonna happen over like, for me, two week intervals. And then uh, teaching other people what you've learned that helps a lot in coworking. So picking a goal is big. You've got a year, don't disappoint me. It's gotta make it impressive, make it cool. There's this saying, without haste, without rest. Like Goethe talking about a star going across the sky. It goes kind of slow, but it moves across the sky. So make it impressive. Um, you gotta think about how you're gonna plan it. So you're gonna make a specific plan. You break it down into two week, for me it's two week intervals. Some things may be longer or shorter depending on the difficulty, but for me it adds urgency. If I say in a year I'm gonna be a world class web developer, well each day I might say, oh, it's Saturday, I'm gonna rest or whatever. But when it's two weeks, you can feel how well you're moving in there. So the intervals themselves, how to plan those, there's a, a little art to it. Part of it is because you're starting at the beginning, you can have some feeling about how you're breaking things down. You can feel if you're skewing too heavily toward one topic or another. It gives you a good, a good chance to share with other people and say, this is my goal, you know a lot about it. Does this look like I'm covering all the bases? So it gives you a good thing. Now, timing the intervals themselves is an art. You're timing it. You want to be perfectly timed. You have those shorter feedback loops. I was thinking you do the topics when you have mentors available. So for me, there's all kinds of topics so different people know about them. But I want to do them when I'll be working with someone who can help me and kind of feed me and give me that extra energy. And you can look ahead for conferences and things like this to talk at. So teaching is also learning. I think in a big part, I can be like thinking about this thing. I, when preparing these slides, I found I, I got a better handle on what this whole thing is about. And that it's, it does a lot. I say just strap yourself into the roller coaster. That's the ticket. You say, this thing's coming up. I'm going to present. We'll see what happens. So that, that, that goes a long way. <laughs> You gotta fight the ruler for me. So not only do you give talks, but you can be writing about things. I say make a, a lengthy blog post because it's gonna show you what you know. When you see that empty page, it's feedback to you, like you know, you've got more to learn. It's difficult, but when you know a lot, you're going overboard and words are pouring out. So you change. This is Proust, and when he's not writing about like sadistic cross-dressing dukes, he's writing about how you change and how you don't realize that you change. You, you know, there are things that are difficult, like whether romance or jobs, and it seems inaccessible. But once you get there, once you achieve that, it's like, oh, boring. You don't realize the profound change that's happened to you. So the best time to write is in that while it's happening. While you, don't, while you haven't yet become complacent, but you know the information so you can convey that passion about what's happening. You know, so yeah, when it's still fresh. It's not only will there be writing, but there's going to be working with others. Writing, this has so far been me telling you, but working with others, others is them telling you, or them telling me in this case. And one thing about writing, I guess we're back to writing, I have that order, is that I, I tend to write for my ideal future self, and that's the person who, this is all boring to them, of course. You know, why would I even want to write something this basic? You've got to put that out of your mind and think things that are boring to, to you can be vitally interesting to other people. So part of this is like being the worst in the room, trying to hang out with people that are way better than you. It's easy to hang out with people that are at your level. It's natural. I guess the tough part is getting those really good people to want to hang out with you. But you, know, you just try to do your best and learn and just feel it's OK. If, if they're really good, you're going to be pulled up a lot faster. So there's a story about this empty cup. We in the software industry like to have pseudo Eastern stories. And so this one is about like a, a, a novice who goes to another monastery. And every time the master is saying, we meditate like this, the novice is like, well, that's kind of like what we do. Let me, tell about what, what, let me tell you about what we do at our monastery. And the master starts pouring the cup and starts overflowing. And I'll leave you to ponder what the metaphor of that is. <laughs> Another thing is <laughs> practicing deliberately. When you're working professionally, you're supposed to know what you're doing. And you're supposed to go quickly and only do what you're good at because people don't want to pay you to waste money. So you've got to take your own time at things that you don't know as much where there's more risk to really isolate it and, and improve on it. Finally, getting out of the office and, and co-working is big, I think. We have this thing called craftsman swaps, where you go to different offices in the software community and you kind of learn what they're doing. 
but I have like Fridays off for 20% growth time and I want to use those, those Fridays to go to other offices and kind of absorb what other people are doing and have them teach me things. So I want to get out of the office. Next is make sure you tell the world about it. That's kind of what I'm trying to do right here. You want to have, you have, you have this commitment that publicity gives you and that helps as well to upgrade you in your skills. So here's a personal story about why publicity adds a lot. Like I worked on a startup, I was programming all the time. I went from my apartment to my coworker or my co-founder's my co apartment and just coding stuff and not talking to the customer and ultimately getting in your own bubble like that just kind of produces your own warped view of things and you end up creating and doing things that are less interesting in the world. So being prepared means like I printed out some little business cards just about this project that remind people the goals I'm trying to achieve and how they can help me and how I can help them and just kind of keeps, you, keeps it in people's minds. So, and I'll, I also have a website that lists the progress I'm making and people seeing my goals helps them to help me. So I was saying, do you want some? Do you want to do a, a goal like this like I'm doing? Because I was thinking, people brought this up to me, I can make this a more general website. So not only does it list my goals, but other people could list the things they're working on and say, I plan to do this, 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 I've done this here, my blog posts maybe have some cards they can print out so they can be one up. So like I said, my one up goal is to be a world class web developer, but I wanna know what your goals are and if you know anyone who can help me in that goal and I can co-work with them or whatever, let me know. So yeah, 